Hello and welcome to Zach's Traders Cafe. Today I'm joined by Anthony Chow, who's co-founder at Agronomics. Hi today, Anthony. Morning. Right, I met you uh, a few years ago when uh, you, you, well, you just co-founded everything and you were just uh, good to go. It looks as though uh, with your profits more than doubling and the share price more than doubling in the recent past as well, uh, the market's finally caught up with the, the agronomics proposition. Uh, yeah, look, that, that is correct. It's, it's been a, a reasonably challenging uh, two-year period along with the entire uh, small cap universe. Um, but it does, you know, we're, we're certainly off to a very good start in 2024, um, and we believe that this is a, a slightly better reflection, still not a full reflection of the intrinsic value of the portfolio. Um, I think I said offline just before we, you know, we, we pressed record that uh, uh, in the market, you know, being too early to the party is almost as bad as being too late sometimes. I mean, look, this is a uh, a relatively new industry, and it's it's going to take a, you know a significant amount of time for for things to um, get commercialized and approved. Um, if we weren't so early, then I, I think we wouldn't have been able to establish ourselves as such a prominent player in the field. Um, so you know, maybe it's uh, although it's been a volatile ride, I, I think generally speaking, we're uh, or the industry is moving from the bottom left to the top right, uh, so to speak. And just to remind people who are not familiar with the company, which I suppose is just, I was hinting that uh, it's still a new area, um, what is your key focus? What are the key drivers for your business? Yeah. So we're the only uh, way that uh, public or private investors can get a concentrated uh, exposure to the field of cellular agriculture. Cellular agriculture uh, by our definition, includes three key verticals. Uh, the first is cell culture companies. This is very exciting technology uh, where uh, companies are looking to produce meat and seafood. Uh, and there's precision fermentation, which has applications in dairy, eggs, collagen, palm oil, hydrogen, uh, and, and many others. And then the third vertical that we focus on are the picks and shovels the enabling technologies for each of those uh, technologies. And uh, 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 the key focus there or key exposure there is a company called Liberation Labs, which is building large scale fermentation facilities, which uh, really is going to be supported by this really broad uh, brush uh, increased focus in biomanufacturing as a whole. And, and just to, to sort of maybe also dr drill down a bit into that, you know, we're in a, uh, we've been in a cost of living crisis, we've had uh, wars, we've had supply chain issues. Is that something that you're, you know, you'll benefit from, or you can help uh, solve that problem or those problems? Look, in the in the long run, yes, absolutely. Um, at the moment, this industry is still at a relatively small scale, um, and the first products have only just begun to be approved. So. You know, in the context of the scale of the food system, we are uh, some way away from producing meaningful amounts of, uh, uh, of protein. But what is going to be proved over the next few years is the unit economics of this technology. Um, and we will, well, you might recall that Jim Mellon, my co founder, wrote the book Moose Law. And one of the central contentions within that book uh, is that within five to 10 years, uh, proteins produced using these technologies are going to hit cost parity or possibly even become cheaper to produce um, than the conventional production methods, which is, of course, using animals. So, um, you know, there won't be an immediate effect in terms of the cost of living crisis. What we're really focused on or what, where I think this technology will really benefit the world is in carbon uh, emission reductions, but also from a food security perspective, because we simply can't feed today's population sustainably with current consumption patterns and production methods. And this is the only technology or group of technologies that we believe has the potential to create a step change in the efficiency of production you know, and actually producing more food with fewer resources. Right. I mean, I suppose you're saying that we're at the foothills of what you're trying to do, but it's, it's clear that we have to go your way. We have to go into into, into your style and your technology regarding um, uh, the, the the area you're in um, but is you know at the moment you've got a market cap of 120 million would you be in five years time vying with the 
Monsanto's or the whoever else there is conventionally around at the moment? Uh, well, Monsanto is a very big company, um, but uh, I do believe that in time, maybe not quite in five years, uh, the size of Monsanto, but I, I think that we are on a very uh, aggressive uh, growth traject trajectory where you know the shares have the potential to compound very aggressively um, and uh, generate very attractive returns for investors. Um, and of course, today we're still trading at a pretty substantial discount uh, to net asset value. So um, I think it's an attractive entry point. And just and just finally, I mean, uh, you you it's it's interesting uh, for, for commentators like me to see uh, a very innovative company on the UK uh, stock market. Do you think you would have a, a better or a, a much better reception if you were listed in the US? Um, I do not believe so. Actually, the US investors are not so familiar with uh, these holding company structures where you've got a portfolio of assets. Uh, it seems that they prefer rifle shot approaches. So I think they would prefer to see our uh, portfolio companies listed rather than ourselves. Um, I, I think generally speaking as well, in the US, you do need a, a much more substantial market cap to be able to get any attention. And um, I, I think we're not quite there yet. Well, we look forward to you getting a substantially higher, a, a greater market cap in the near future. In the meantime, Anthony Chow, co-founder at Agronomics. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for your time. Cheers.